Assalamualaikum everyone. My name is Dr. Shafiin Zulfikar, and I am going to teach you cell physiology. Now, what is the difference between the extracellular fluid and the intracellular fluid? As their name indicates, intracellular fluid is the fluid which is present inside the cell, and extracellular fluid, the fluid which is present outside the cell. Then, intracellular fluid has more protein as compared to extracellular. No protein is present in the interstitial fluid, but plasma consists of protein. Okay. Second is the difference in the ions, concentration of ions. Intracellular fluid has more potassium ion and more phosphate ion, whereas extracellular fluid has more sodium and more chloride. This diagram shows the quantity of these ions present in the extracellular fluid and in the intracellular fluid. You have to memorize these values because these values are very important for the diagnosis of certain diseases. Let's see their concentration. So for sodium, sodium in the extracellular fluid is 142 liters or in the plasma it is 142, in the interstitial is 139 and in the intracellular fluid it is 14 okay, milliosmoles per liter. Potassium intracellularly, extra, extracellularly 4.2 and intracellularly 140. Then calcium extracellularly 1.3, intracellularly 1.2. Then calcium. Calcium is only present in the extracellular fluid. It is not present inside the cell. Okay. And then you can see the concentration of various ions. Now, extracellular fluid is called the internal environment of the body. Why? Because it contains all the ions and nutrients which are needed by the cell to maintain cell life. For example, oxygen, glucose, different ions, amino acid, fatty substances and many other important nutrients which are needed to maintain the cell life. All these nutrients are present in the extracellular fluid. So we call extracellular fluid as the internal environment of the body. Now comes a very important concept that is homeostasis. Homeo means similar, stasis means stable. So by definition, homeostasis is defined as maintenance of nearly constant conditions in the internal environment. It means our body is in a state of constant okay, in a, or in a constant state. Any change in this state will cause damage to the cells of our body. So essentially all the organs and tissues of the body perform functions that help to maintain these relatively constant conditions. For example, our lungs provide oxygen to our cells, our kidney maintain constant iron concentration, our GIT system or the gastrointestinal system provides nutrients. Okay, so all these organs are performing their function to maintain these relatively constant conditions. Now, how the nutrients are originated in the ECF? So, various systems are responsible for the origin of nutrients. Let's see them one by one. Number one is the respiratory system. We know when we take in ox uh, air and it reaches to the lungs. The lungs are responsible for the Now comes the origin of nutrients in the ECF. Various systems of our body is responsible for the origin of nutrients. Let's see them one by one. So number one is the respiratory system or the lungs. These, uh, the lungs are responsible to, for the oxygen uptake. When we inspire air and when it reaches to the lungs, the lungs take in that oxygen and then deliver it to the cells for their functioning. Then gastrointestinal system or the GIT system. GIT system is responsible for the absorption of all the important nutrients which are present in the food. Okay. Then liver. Not all the nutrients which we take in through food are absorbed from the GIT tract. Okay. Some of the 
nutrients are also absorbed through the liver the liver converts those substances into more usable form okay so in this way it uh, participates in the origin of nutrients and lastly the musculoskeletal system how musculoskeletal system is responsible for the origin of nutrients so in order to reach the place where the food is present we need to move so this system allows us allows us to move to that place and to obtain that food and then that food he provides us as nutrients next is the removal of metabolic end products or removal of waste products number 1 is the removal of carbon dioxide by the lungs when the lungs take oxygen from the air they exchange carbon dioxide and expel it out of the body carbon dioxide is a waste product our body don't need it our body so we remove this carbon dioxide through lungs in exchange of oxygen next is the git tract undigested material that enters the git tract and some waste products they are eliminated through feces liver detoxifies or removes many of the drugs and chemicals kidney kidney excretes many waste products through urine next is the regulation of body function body function our body functions are regulated through these two important systems number one is the nervous system and number two is the hormonal system the nervous system consists of three important parts number one is the sensory input which detects the change then is the central nervous system which consists of brain and spinal cord okay that change is uh then deliver to the from the sensory uh, input to the central nervous system that is the brain and then comes the motor output okay so motor system no motor output our functions of the body are regulated through these two important systems number one is the nervous system number two is the hormonal system nervous system consists of three important parts number 1 is the sensory input number 2 is the sensory central nervous system which consists of brain and spinal cord and number 3 is the motor out it also consists of one important part that is the autonomic nervous system the internal organs okay second is the hormonal system so hormonal system what is a hormone is a chemical substance which is secreted from the endocrine gland and this chemical substance then controls the function of our body for example thyroid hormone now the protection of the body how are our bodies protected okay so these systems are responsible for the protection of the body number 1 is the immune system number 2 is the integumentary system and number 3 is the reproduction immune system consists of white blood cells lymph nodes and lymph vessels so all these protects our body from foreign uh, substances such as bacteria viruses fungi by uh, fighting against them okay second is the integumentary system integumentary system skin and its appendages which are hair nail all these protect the underlying structure of our body for example they cover the organs of our body now comes the protection of the body these systems are responsible for the protection of the body number 1 is the immune system number 2 is the integumentary system and number 3 is the reproduction immune system consists of wbcs lymph nodes and lymph vessels which uh, protects our body from bacteria viruses fungi by fighting against them second is the integumentary system integumentary system the skin and its various appendages like the hair nail they provide protection to the deeper tissues and organ of our body okay and last is the reproduction reproduction it maintains homeostasis by generating new cells and replacing those which are which are dying we were studying cell physiology 
and we will continue with it. Our today's topic is control systems of the body. So these systems, whenever there is a change in our body or cause we have to maintain a constant state, which is homeostasis. So whenever there's a change in the body, these systems get activated okay? and then they uh, react according to the change. So there are two main control systems of the body. One is the negative feedback and other is the positive feedback. Let us see what these systems are. The so first is the negative feedback. All homeostatic mechanisms use negative feedback to maintain a constant value. Negative feedback means whenever there is a change occurs in a system, the change automatically cause a corrective mechanism to start, which reverse the original change and bring the system back to normal. It means the initial, when a change occurs and it is in the opposite direction of the initial stimulus, then it is negative feedback. It name indicates negative. So when the change is in the opposite direction of the initial stimulus, then it is negative feedback. It also means that bigger the change, the bigger the corrective mechanism. And remember this, our body uses negative feedback in almost every condition. It is also a protective mechanism. It prevents our body from harmful effects of the change. But there are also some conditions in which positive feedback comes into play. Now I will uh, tell you how this through an example uh, so that you can memorize it. So example of negative feedback. Now see, there is an, this is an example. Okay, There is an increase in the arterial pressure. That is the blood pressure. Whenever there is an increase in the arterial pressure, then the baroreceptors, these are the sensors. These are uh, pressure sensitive receptors which are present in the blood vessel. So when the, whenever there is an increased arterial pressure, this pressure activates the baroreceptors. These baroreceptors then inhibit the vasomotor center in the medulla. So it is a part of the brain. Your medulla is the part of your brain. And vasomotor center means uh, this center is responsible for the uh, contraction or dilatation of the blood vessel. So number one, there is an increase in the blood pressure. This increase in blood pressure is sensed by the baroreceptors. Uh, these baroreceptors then inhibit this vasomotor center. When this vasomotor center is inhibited, it decreases the impulses to heart and blood vessel, which in turn decreases the pumping activity of the heart and causes vasodilatation. VD is vasodilatation. And due to this vasodilatation and decreased pumping activity of the heart, the blood pressure is restored to its normal value. So you can see initially there is an increase in the blood pressure, but the final result is decrease in the blood pressure. So it is negative feedback. Another example of negative feedback is uh, regulation of carbon dioxide. You know, we all know that carbon dioxide is a waste product. It should not be present in our body. So how this, uh, if there is an excess in of carbon dioxide in the body, how we eliminate it is through the negative feedback. So number one, there is an increase in the carbon dioxide okay, in the tissue fluid. This is an example. When there is increased carbon dioxide in our body, then this carbon dioxide, the respiratory center, Again, these respiratory centers are present in the brain. So when these respiratory centers are activated, when there is increased rate of breathing, more carbon dioxide is expired from the lungs. And finally, there is decreased carbon dioxide in the tissue fluid. Again, initial stimulus is increased carbon dioxide, but the final result or outcome is decreased carbon dioxide. So this is another example of negative feedback. Now comes the positive feedback. Positive means uh, in simple words, when the final output is in the same direction as that of the initial stimulus, then it is positive feedback. The output is continually enhanced or amplified so that the controlled variable continues to be moved in the direction of the initial change or the pathway in which the response reinforces the stimulus. Let us see positive feedback through an example. So, Whenever the blood vessel is ruptured, so clotting factors are activated in that ruptured area. Whenever a blood vessel is ruptured, clotting factors are activated at the site of the ruptured area. Okay, so these clotting factors activate more clotting factors. First, there is a rupture of blood vessel. Second is some clotting factors are activated. When these clotting factors enter the ruptured vessel, they activate more clotting factors. When more clotting factors activated, clot is formed at the site of the ruptured vessel and bleeding is stopped. Okay, so the initial stimulus in is enhanced 
further another example of positive feedback is the when there whenever there is a onset of labor labor is a uh, it is a process through which a there is a child is born okay? so labor is the contraction of the uterus so whenever uh, there is a onset of labor oxytocin oxytocin is a hormone which is released from the hypothalamus which is a part of your brain whenever there is onset of labor which is contraction of the uterus or a hormone oxytocin is released from the hypothalamus this oxytocin further increases uterine contraction then when uterine contraction increases the baby's head is pushed through the cervix it further stretches the cervix when the the cervix further stretches it releases more oxytocin when oxytocin is more is again released it will cause increased uterine contraction it will further push the baby head further cervix is stretched more oxytocin release and as a result there is increased uterine contraction and in the end the baby is delivered so this is positive feedback it is it is in the same direction so this is the positive feedback and negative feedback remember mostly our body uses negative feedback it is a protective feedback but in some conditions positive feedback also comes into play for example when there is a blood vessel ruptured or in case of labor these are some conditions in which positive feedback mechanism is also protective now another uh, topic is the gain of a control system what is gain of a control system it is the degree of effectiveness with which a control system maintains constant condition it means how much a control system can or uh, overcome the change its degree of effectiveness with which a control system maintains constant condition which is homeostasis is determined through gain of a control system so let us see this through an example okay so this is a example of gain of a control system okay so we have two person one is person a and one is person b so person a has baroreceptors which are not working baroreceptors again are the pressure sensitive receptors present are in your blood vessel and person b's baroreceptors are working normally so person a baroreceptors are not working and person b's baroreceptors are working normally now we infuse large amount of blood in both of them now person a whose baroreceptors are not functioning properly his blood pressure rises from 100 mm hg to 175 mm how much difference you can see if baroreceptors are not working the person and if we infused blood to a person a his blood pressure will raise from 100 mm hg to 175 then when same amount of blood is infused to a person whose baroreceptors are working normally his pressure raises from 100 to 125 so not very much as compared to the one whose baroreceptors are not working. so 50 mm hg is the correction caused by the control system 100 is the normal blood pressure it is an example okay 100 is the normal blood pressure so the difference between 175 and 125 is 50 so this difference that is 50 mm hg is the correction by the control system but still a person's blood pressure raises from 100 to 125 in case his baroreceptors are working so 25 mm hg is the error i repeat normal blood pressure is 100 one a person a has increased blood pressure to 175 and a person b has increased blood pressure to 125 so difference between 175 and 125 is 50 so this is the correction made by the control system but still the blood pressure is raised to 25 mm hg so this is the error which is still made by the control system okay so we have a formula for gain of the control system this formula is correction divided by error so you have to know the correction and the error and when we divide it the result will be the gain of the control system okay this is a very uh, easy phenomena uh, i hope you will learn it last is the feed forward control what is feed forward control it is used for responses made in anticipation of a change it means um uh, your body if there is a change your body has, will already anticipate that change or the regulatory process established before a change focus on this one a regulatory process established before the change for example heart rate and respiratory rate increases before exercise so this is made 
So the last topic is feed forward control. What is feed forward control? It is a, it is used for responses made in anticipation of a change or the regulatory process established before a change. For example, when you are going to perform an exercise, your heart rate and respiratory rate will increase before that in order to accommodate the load which will be on the body during the exercise. So this is a protective, we can say, phenomena. So before a change, your body, your body will sense it and it will respond according to the change. So this is feed forward control. It is the, what is the significance of feed forward control? It uh, prevents your body from any damage because it will sense the change before. So the body will react accordingly. So it is a protective phenomenon. So this was the, the second lecture of cell physiology. Okay, I hope you have uh, understood it. Uh, we will continue with cell physiology in our next lectures. Uh, thank you so much.